Welcome back to the Christmas edition of Secrets from the Ancient Past. We're letting the land of the Bible share brand new insight with us about a story we love so very much, a story we're already very familiar with. But you know, parts of the Christmas story, like other passages in the Bible, really can't be understood in, in their fullness until we connect with the land of the Bible. You can read in Matthew's gospel or Luke's gospel about the birth of Jesus, but it's it's different to actually walk the path that Mary and Joseph walked, to see what they saw, to comprehend it. So, so come with me once again as we visit the Christmas story by way of the land. Maybe it will help us change the way we celebrate Christmas this year and help us understand how to be better followers of Jesus all year long. Now, in this in this series, we've already been to Nazareth. We've met Mary and Joseph and tried to comprehend what their small village was like. We've met the incredible personality of Herod the Great and maybe understood how he dominated the story. And now at long last, we come to Bethlehem. But brace yourself. Bethlehem today does not look like your Christmas card. So perhaps anything you've ever imagined or pictured as you've sung your favorite Christmas carol. Bethlehem is quite a large city today, nothing like the small village Mary and Joseph would have found at the end of their long journey. But even today, residents are still very proud that their community was once home to Ruth and Boaz, King David. It was also the burial place of Rachel, and of course, it's the place where Jesus was born. When you visit Bethlehem, tour guides will almost certainly take you straight to Manger Square and the Church of the Nativity. You'll enter through a small door of humility and emerge to the sights and the sounds of a Greek Orthodox church. The church is likely to be crowded. Christian pilgrims from all over the world often wait in long lines to pray at one of the icons, to light candles, and of course to touch the spot where it is said Jesus was born. The church was built nearly 17 centuries ago. It has been expanded, destroyed by fire, rebuilt and remodeled many times. No other church in the world has been in constant use as a place of worship for a longer period of time than this one. And throughout the centuries, the Church of the Nativity has gone to great lengths to honor its location with its architecture, with its icons and great decorations. Ironically, efforts to beautify this location have hidden the most obvious secret hidden in plain sight. <laughs> that secret the church is built over a cave. In order to see the evidence that the cave that exists under the church of the nativity called the grotto, one only needs to go next door to another newer church. It too covers a cave, and that cave connects with the cave underneath the church of the nativity. The rocky landscape of Bethlehem has always been marked with natural caves, and in ancient times, local residents used such caves to house their flocks and other animals during the seasons of cold, rainy weather in the winter. It was just such a place that Jesus was born. Now, if you're like me, touring the churches of Bethlehem is a little disappointing, I mean, I hate to say it like that, but the scenes inside either church are nothing like all the images I've, I've envisioned all these years when I sing Away in a Manger or Joy to the World or come to think about it even, oh, little town of Bethlehem. It just never mentioned all the churches. So here's something we did some years back when we went, in, went on a search for Christmas. We, we went to the outskirts of Bethlehem where people haven't settled just yet in this large community. And we, we knew that the land is already full of windblown caves. And, and up there on the ridge of the Judean mountains where the rain and natural erosion and never-ending wind makes all of the caves, now we, we began to look for one, one that was big enough for shepherds to use with their sheep. And sure enough, we found one. The cave we found would be a perfect place for a shepherd to take cover in the heat of a summer's day or to find refuge during a winter's rain. The cave had a small opening, but there was plenty of room on the inside. It smelled of dirt and sheep dung, and it was a stark reminder of the humble beginnings of Jesus of Nazareth, the promised Messiah, the Son of God. It was in a cave much like this one 
where Joseph finally found a place for Mary to rest and give birth to the most important human being ever born. Now to be very clear, that cave is not the cave where Jesus was born. We were a few miles away from Bethlehem when we were making that shoot. But I'm telling you, isn't that an incredible picture? I mean, what a humble birthplace. And you know, for the rest of his life, Jesus lived in what we would call poverty. I mean, as shocking as it seems, he owned little more than the clothes he was wearing. That might have been all he owned at the end of his life. He had no savings account, no retirement plan, no investment strategy. In fact, he kept telling his followers to lay up treasures for themselves, not on earth where they would be destroyed, but rather in heaven. He, he encouraged his followers to keep their eyes on eternity, no matter what was happening right here and now. And above all else, he challenged his followers. He begged them to find that life-changing grace that God offers through him and him alone. Oh, I pray you have found that grace. I pray Jesus has already changed every part of your life. And no matter what your personal circumstances might be this particular holiday season, I pray you know the peace that was promised. You remember the angels sang about it, the peace on earth that had come to rest with, with people like us. And, and, and that peace is still available. I pray you have the most Jesus-filled Christmas season you've ever known. And I pray that peace that passes all understanding is yours for the rest of your life. Thanks for joining us again. It means so much to me that you have. And, and, and to walk these ancient paths together, even if we have to use technology to do it rather than actually walking them together, it's just an honor to have you along for the journey. And I hope, that you'll share the word with others that we're walking along these ancient paths. Help us share the word about this podcast, this video cast, as I like to call it. Refer your friends, family members, uh, people on social media that you know to secretsfromtheancientpast.com or simply tell them to look for Secrets from the Ancient Paths on any podcasting platform like iTunes. Well, thanks for joining us again. I hope to see you next week. We're going to finish up this Christmas series and I hope, to, I hope you'll join us then. Until we meet again, I'm Andy Cook.